Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name's Greg. Let's make some summer sausage. Today I'll be using some venison and I'm using the scraps of trimming from a pork belly. Now pork belly is usually about 50% fat. If I use equal parts, I should get about a 25% fat into this sausage, which is pretty good going for about 25, maybe 30%. So I'm just gonna cut this up. And I'm just cutting it up into pieces that are gonna fit in my grinder well. Look at how red that venison is. Belly fat. Well, it's not really belly fat, it's belly. It's so beautiful. This particular pig was my favorite out of the three I've worked with over the past year. I'm gonna put this in a bowl and get it into the freezer. I've already got my grinder parts in the freezer, getting nice and cold. Be back in a few. This jalapeno cheddar venison summer sausage has a slightly different spice profile than my other jalapeno cheddar summer sausage because venison can be a little gamey. What I'll be using for this sausage is kosher salt. Be using some Instacure number one to keep it safe while it sits at room temperature to ferment. Be using some dextrous and some sugar to feed our starter culture. I'll be using some black peppercorns and some coriander, which I will toast up quickly before I grind them. Be using some rosemary and some thyme to help cut that gaminess a little bit. I'll be using mustard seed, which I'll be toasting and leaving whole because I like the little pops they give. Be using a little bit of garlic powder. I'm gonna be using some high temp, non-fat dry milk as my binder. I'll be using some cheddar cheese, which I've cut up and keeping in the freezer till I use them. I'm not using high temp cheddar today, but that would be a good choice as well. And I've got jalapenos. Some of them I've diced up because I want to have some studded jalapeno in there. And some of them I left whole with seeds that I'm gonna run through my grinder with the meat. My meat is between 29 and 30 degrees. That's gonna be perfect for grinding. You can see this is nice and frosty cold from being in the freezer. I'm gonna start with this seven millimeter die and then I'm gonna switch it down to a four and a half. Sometimes I just throw a little more through to bring the last out, but today I think I'm just gonna use a little bit of stale bread. That works too. Well, still running nice and cold. Barely warmed up at all. Saying 29 degrees, so that's pretty good. Might not wanna let it be so cold if you have a smaller grinder. Pretty sure I killed one that way. For my summer sausage today, I'm gonna be using my last one I have of this uh, Collagen Middles. 90 millimeter so i need to get it soaking so quite simply I put it in the water here i like to fill up the inside too and just make sure it's covered that only needs about i don't know about a half hour is plenty starter culture today i'm going to be using tspx and this Acidify slowly at lower temperatures. So today I'm gonna just leave it on my counter and I'm gonna hope that that works for me in my schedule. So I'm gonna put about a quarter teaspoon and I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of clean, fresh water. I have good water here. If you live on a chlorinated water system, good idea to use distilled water. Now I'm just gonna leave that out for about 15 minutes, maybe a half hour. I've got too much going on at once today and I forgot to run this through my grinder with my meat. So I'm just gonna slice it up real small and add it to my sausage mix. I wanted to have a few that I left the seeds in because the seeds are where all the heat is. But I only wanted to leave seeds in a few. I would like the flavor of jalapenos too without all the heat. Just wanted some of the heat. It's a really good idea to wear gloves when working with hot peppers, or you might regret it next time you go to... I've had my meat in the freezer again. It's down to like 29 degrees. That's more than cold enough. Between 30 and 35 is great. Well, I'm gonna add my spices, my cure, and my binder. Everything basically, except the cheese and the jalapenos. I'm gonna add my water. Liners on so I don't freeze my hands and I don't warm up my sausage and I'm just gonna mix till it gets sticky and furry 
starting to get sticky. It's lifting up my bowl. It's not really very furry yet, but uh, I think it's time to add my jalapenos. Pad these in the freezer. Just want to keep everything as cold as I can. Starting to be a little sticky. It's getting there. Add my cubed up frozen cheddar cheese. Again, a high temp cheddar would be a good choice also. One of these days I might do a side by side comparison of the two. Shoot me a comment if you'd like to see a comparison of the high temp cheddar versus a regular cheddar just frozen. All right, you know I'm going to give you a close up to show you how furry it's looking. You can see all these little strands reaching out. Trying to grab whatever they can grab onto. See that this is very sticky. Can lift the ball by just grabbing the meat. Can't get it off my hands very easy. It's time to set up the stuffer. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I definitely have too much going on today and too much on my mind. Because I almost forgot to add my culture. I did that once. And my pH didn't drop. My meat started smelling weird. I had to throw it out. Luckily, that was way back when I was learning how to do this stuff. And I was buying commodity pork just to experiment because I didn't want to waste any of the good pork I've been getting from my friends. And uh, it's the only time I did that. But I almost did it again. So note to self, try not to make sausage when you got too much going on. I would have been ashamed to waste this venison. Glad I caught that. I can lift the bowl up by grabbing the meat. My meat is very sticky when I grab it. I guess I'm done. Now, for real, time to get the stuffer. I'm gonna load up my stuffer, put a few handfuls in, and then just push much of that air out. Squeeze that all the way down to the bottom. So I'm not leaving any space for air. It's like a perfect fit for my stuffer. Means I must have just about five pounds. Let's see if I can fit that all into a chubby. Well, if you see, I got that red hot. Yeah, it's a little bit blurry, you can't see. But anyway, it's hot. I'm gonna set it down to cool. I'm gonna push this farce, that's what you call a sausage batter. And I'm gonna push it out to the end of my horn. All right. Now, if you've watched me make sausage, you know I like to lube my horn up. No one likes a dry horn. And I'm just going to put this over the top. Get my bowl out of the way. Punch a couple holes in the end. Want to get this as tight as I can without bursting it, obviously. Let's see if we can't compress that little bit I just added. Not leave any air pockets there from that. I think I do have an air pocket from that last little bit I added. Let's see if I can't push it out of there. All right. Not bad. All right. Just going to twist the hell out of this. It's kind of a lot to do. Hold this thing, tie a knot, try to keep it in the camera frame. Fold that over. Get another knot on the back side. Creates a little spot in the casing. Try to create this little nubbin on the top of my casing. And that way, if you hang it from there, it, uh, it grabs onto that rather than sliding off. But actually, these ones are pretty tight, so that's probably gonna be my bottom. Sterilize this for a reason. Especially over here on the end I tied. Definitely got a bit of a air. I tried to squeeze as much out as I could, but definitely looser than the rest of the log. And this is just gonna allow air to escape. It's gonna let that casing shrink right up to the uh, meat itself. Little bits of meat will squeeze out that hole and kind of seal it, actually.
We grab this last little bit out of my hopper. That's gonna be my test piece to test my pH. I'm gonna be gone at least 24 hours, so I'm going with the colder ferment. I'm pretty sure it won't be down there by the time I get home. We'll see. Well, got home. It was gone a little longer than anticipated. And I think this is lower than I was going for, but 4.6. Nothing wrong with that. Better go get the smoker going. I've been borrowing this smoker from a neighbor. The bear messed mine up. Very happy with the amount of smoke it makes with this thing. It's supposed to go in there and at these low temperatures, it doesn't really seem to make much smoke. So just got my smoke generator. Poke that thing through the intake and uh seems to be making some more smoke now so we'll see all right well the smoker didn't like that you can see it got up to 200 degrees it's cooling down now seems as though the air blowing through there uh ignited chips made it just too hot it couldn't keep itself cold and Oh, I'm afraid we may have rendered some fat out of this summer sausage, and that kind of sucks. So, now we know. But hey, at least we got some smoke on it. Yeah, you can see this cheese is melting here. Definitely rendered some fat out. Oh, that's sad. All right, the ice box. I think it's still going to be pretty tasty. Ah. Took eight days for this to lose 15% of its weight. Let's see what it looks like. It's studded with the peppers and the cheese. Got a little white mold being in my drying cabinet, but I did just spray a whole bunch of this in there. The white mold's fine. It's a perfectly edible mold. And since we're not going to eat this casing, it just peels off anyway. That's really good really different than that last jalapeno cheddar summer sausage. Pretty sure it's because of the rosemary and the thyme. Yeah, rosemary, thyme, sage. Those herbs really do a lot to cut the gaminess of pretty much any gamey meat. Goes very well with venison. And it really makes this summer sausage a lot different than, than that last one I made a video of, even though they're both jalapeno cheddar. But you have to treat venison differently because it can be pretty gamey. I wasn't sure how it would go with the jalapeno cheddar, but it goes really good. I'd say this has just the right amount of rosemary and thyme to cut the gaminess, but not make it a dominant flavor. It's like a supporting character. You definitely taste the herb, but it's not too much. And you know, I was worried that this would be dry from the fat rendering when it cooked higher than I wanted it to, but it's fine. It's perfect actually. If you like this video give it a thumbs up if you've been watching a few of my videos subscribe and make sure you're putting some love into your food peace